Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Kaltony SDS tripod system with the Focus 8 head and carry case. Overnighted to my place in England from the Kaltony factory in Italy, which is pretty cool. SDS means Smart Deployment System, or Smart Deployment System if you're James Bond. It has smart lock legs, which locks the entire leg with one latch. And the thicker sections of the leg always come out first. Then these can come out. And a new mid-level spreader, which opens wider than most and closes automatically. These legs are designed for speed, like news gathering, live events, and filming grizzly bears. After a few minutes of practice, I was able to open or close the cartoni in four seconds. Here you can see me do the same test again with the 535, and the difference is with the 535, I'm really fighting it to get it done quickly. And if I wasn't fighting it, if I just did it normally, then it would be much slower. Whereas with the Cartoni, doing it normally as you would on a normal shoot, it is fast. Even if you're not trying to be super fast, it makes it easy to be fast. Here it is at a nice relaxed speed. And you can see that it's still just really, really, really easy. I don't have to rush to make this quick. It is just super quick. Normal speed with a normal tripod. You know, if you're trying to be careful, not break something or kill someone, the, the speed difference is really big. Here I have a 75 millimeter bowl, but the head and legs should be available separately in both 100 millimeter and 75 millimeter. For example, if you need a really good fluid head for travel, you could pair this head up with something like uh, this Giotto's, which has the uh, extending arm, which I love. These are finally back in stock after about two years of being nearly impossible to find. So uh, go and check out my review because they are awesome. So I took the SDS tripod out with a pretty Swedish girl called Sophia for some smoothness testing. And the Focus 8 head made it effortless to get superb results with my 28 to 70 lens. This lens doesn't give the most interesting images, but I thought it was the most suitable option I had for these tests. I will also show you guys some shots that were not perfect due to my own mistakes in the movement, not any problem with the head. I think it's good when a review includes both the good and the bad stuff, not just everything that you got perfect. I did a lot of starts and stops as well as starting a tilt in the middle of a pan because both of those are hard to do with most fluid heads. The Focus 8 makes both damn near effortless. Everything in this video was shot at close to maximum drag and I love that I never had to adjust it. It just works. It has features mostly found on much more expensive heads. As usual, in this review, I will try to find every small issue I can, but overall, I was really impressed with it. Most fluid heads under $1,000 perform poorly because they're not actually fluid heads, they are friction-based. One kind actually has liquid that moves smoothly. The other kind just has plates that rub against each other, like dirty strippers. But the word fluid also means smooth, so unfortunately, most fluid heads on the market are not actually fluid heads. This one is an actual fluid head and a pretty damn good one even compared to some more expensive options. Now, the aim of a counterbalance spring is to allow you to be able to tilt the camera to any angle without fighting gravity and without fighting the internal spring. The Focus 8 has a fully variable counterbalance adjustment. Most others in this price range only have something like three or five different weight settings. It's also one of the only heads in this price range that have a counterbalance spring that goes close to zero, which is awesome. Most others in this price range don't go below two kilograms or sometimes 1.5. Of course, you can add weight with a rig or accessories, but I'm really not a fan of that. If you guys have seen my videos in the past few years, you'd know that I really like my camera pretty much bare bones, except the stuff that I really need to add to it, like a microphone or something. You are going to want to have the drag turned up to the maximum, but you can actually use it with tiny cameras like this and get really, really good results. So that's awesome. In this example, I've removed the pan bar because it is not very heavy, but it's still a little bit heavier than the Yi action camera. It was pulling it back a tiny bit. And of course, the smaller you go with the camera, the more you'll have a bit too much pressure from the spring right at the end of the tilt. Now, some people might find that they get really good results shooting with this head like this, with both hands on the head and possibly with the pan bar removed. It's a bit strange, but for some reason it works. And I like both this and with the pan bar. I found that especially for shooting telephoto, this works. Although all the examples in this video were shot with the pan bar, but this I think can be something that a lot of people like because it gives you a lot of resistance that prevents unwanted motion from getting to the camera and just gives you really good control with both hands. So I quite like it. Here with a one and a half kilogram DSLR, we can get this balanced really well. You'll see that right at the edge, you have the spring giving you a tiny bit too much tension. With anything over zero, you're gonna have to balance this with the spring already enabled. For example here, if I have the spring turned off and I balance it perfectly, and then I turn the spring on, 
for this weight, then it will push back too much. It's not a big issue, you just have to balance it after you've enabled the spring. Here at five kilograms, we can get it balanced really well. Just under seven kilograms, we can get good balance. We do have a short-term memory effect, meaning that when you tilt all the way down and then back up halfway, the spring doesn't work that well anymore. Now, it's not a big issue. First of all, you don't aim your camera down that much, that often, and also once you come back to here, then it goes back to being fine again. It is something that happens on some fluid heads. I don't know why. Same thing applies when tilting upwards. At seven kilograms, you can still get pretty good telephoto performance, but it does require you to do a lot of the work, meaning the smoothness is there, but this doesn't have a huge amount of drag. So this doesn't fix all your little mistakes. It fixes some of them, but you still need to be smooth with your movements. Don't try this at home, but I was able to balance this perfectly with a 10 kilogram weight on this, which it's not rated for. The issue was that if I tilted all the way down, then the head could take it, but the bowl couldn't, and the bowl would slip out of position. This head is super smooth and gives excellent results with smaller cameras. We also have a fully variable drag adjustment, which is another rare feature in this price range. Usually we just have four or five different steps. You will see some friction-based heads with a fully variable adjustment, but usually with really poor performance when you add any drag. Now drag prevents unwanted motion from transferring to the camera, so I do want more drag than this for telephoto uses, but for general use, this works beautifully. As long as you don't carelessly grab and let go of the pan bar in the middle of a shot. Here I'm exaggerating that a little bit, but basically this head works best if you keep your hand on the pan bar during your shots. This is still really good with the 5D, but the more weight I added to it, the more I felt like I wanted more drag. And obviously it still works, but I did feel I wanted more. And as with any fluid head, you can increase the drag by holding the pan bar closer to the head. Sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's a bit more awkward. It can be a really useful track sometimes. At minimum drag, the tilt goes a little bit looser than the pan, but it's no problem doing wet pans or anything like that. Whoosh. Now, smoothness-wise, with the telephoto lens, this is pretty good. I would say roughly the same as the uh, crazy little Veravon here. This older version of the Veravon is super smooth, which is why it is my benchmark for fluid head tests. Unfortunately, some genius at the factory decided to change the oil they use in these. And I would say with either of these, the results you'll get with a long lens depends on how long a lens you choose and how much practice you've had with it, and you know, just getting really good at controlling those really fine movements. Now, especially with longer lenses, if you remove all pressure right after a move, you'll see the head returning slightly. This is called backlash. This happens in all drag settings in both the pan and tilt directions. And it is in the head, not the flexing of the legs or the pan bar or something like that. So as you can see here, when I keep my hands on the head, I get much better performance. I spoke to Cartoni's president, Elisabetta Cartoni. I said, ciao Elisabetta, cazzo fai cappuccino spaghetti? Because those are the only words I know in Italian. She explained that the backlash is a limitation of the lightweight and compact design of the Focus 8, and that the larger Focus 12 head should be better. I haven't tried myself, so I can't confirm yet. The Focus 8 is perfect in some ways, so I'm definitely interested to see how their larger heads perform. The pan is not always completely silent, but in most filming situations, I don't see how that would cause a problem. The drag adjustments are both chunky and very easy to use, as are the pan and tilt locks, which are both very strong. The tilt lock can be accidentally slightly engaged by the user when adjusting the drag. Shouldn't be a big problem, just keep an eye on it. You'll need about 43 half turns to get the counterbalance from minimum to maximum. Here we have the quick release lock, the safety release, and a plate that should fit Manfrotto, Vinton, and Sackler Ace. The plate is a bit long for some cameras, but I guess you could buy a shorter one if you wanted to. Some thinner rubber would hold better and would probably be more durable. I did abuse this plate a little bit in my test, so this shouldn't happen if you use this properly on a camera, but I've abused this far worse for seven years. And we have markings here to help you bring the camera back to being balanced after you've taken it off. It requires a coin or tool and has a little marking to show you that it can only be installed in this direction from the back of the head. And if you're really picky about quick release plates like I am, then you could add your own one on top of this. The pan bar is extendable, or as we like to say in France, extendable. This pan bar is very long. That's what she said. And it is removable. That, no, no, that, no. And this is actually for when you want to attach accessories to this, but actually this way can also be really good for using this with a small camera because you're removing some weight from the back and that just makes it easier to balance without pushing the camera really far forwards on the head. This head is pretty chunky, but I think it's actually Cartoni's smallest head. And this is pretty lightweight at around 1.8 kilograms. And it's around five kilograms ready to film and around six kilograms with the bag. The Focus 8 is made mostly of a composite material, except a few parts like the plate, the pan bar, and a spare screw and stuff like that. 
Composite means a combination of materials, here that is nylon reinforced with fiberglass and carbon fiber. It doesn't feel very expensive in the hand compared to metal, but it can actually be more durable for the weight than metal, and it allows the Focus 8 to cost less than many of its competitors, even though it has much better features. It's also nicer to work with outdoors in cold winters or very strong sunlight because metal can get very hot or very cold to the touch, especially for people who don't like to work with gloves. The half ball is also made of the same material, so I would be gentle when connecting this to a third-party tripod made of metal, as that could put pressure on this. Elisabetta told me this is not a problem, but that's just my thoughts on it. I wouldn't crank down really hard on the thing here. And she said that using this in direct sunlight is not a problem. The official working temperatures of this are minus 40 to plus 60 Celsius. It could hold a slider with a small camera, but this material does flex, so it's really not ideal. If you need to put a slider on one tripod, then you want a good half ball adapter. This lock is easy to use, but I do prefer the stick type ones. I just find them slightly easier when I'm trying to do fine adjustments. There are taller tripods out there, but I think this is more than enough. It comes with either aluminium or carbon fiber leg poles. Both options use a nylon composite for the other parts. It doesn't feel as fancy as metal, but it works well. The leveling bowl has a little bit less angle adjustability than I'm used to because of the slightly smaller hole between the legs here, and this little black locking ring makes that even worse. In that one direction, it actually prevents motion even more. This is the worst it gets. Move it just a tiny bit, then it can go a little bit more. You just have to turn this little guy as you do the adjustment. It's not ideal, but it works most of the time. And if you need to, just adjust one of the legs. Most tripods have the leg locks over here, so you either have to bend down to get to these, or you have to lift up the tripod to bring them to you. You're doing this thing where you're opening the legs with the weight of the camera going higher and higher above you. Having these leg locks high up means I don't need to lift the tripod up. Here at full extension, these legs perform really well in what I call the twerk test, which is like a torque test, but you jiggle your butt as you do it. And here for comparison, I brought the 535 down to the Cartoni's maximum height, and here they both do about the same, but if they're both at maximum, then the Cartoni is actually better. At minimum height, with the spreader as wide as it will go, this is very, very rigid. These legs are fairly lightweight at around 3.5 kilograms with the spreader, and the aluminum version is not much heavier. Pretty easy to carry over your shoulder like this, or you can carry them like that if you lock these little rubber things. You don't need to worry about these if you're carrying this over your shoulder or in a bag, but if you want to carry it like I showed you, then you'll want to tighten these, which requires a bit of muscle power, because otherwise they will open. On the 535, you just tighten some bolts, and it's super easy to carry. Sometimes when you open this up, you might end up with this. A quick jiggle of your tripod fixes that. And of course, these rubber pads can be removed. These are great when you're filming on mud, grass, cake, anything like that. Personally, I do prefer these ball type feet. I just find they grip rough terrain a little better than the flat pads without having to bother revealing the spike. Same goes for flat ground or in material where the spikes don't help much like gravel. The bolts are marine grade steel. So even if you're working around salt water, you shouldn't have any issues with rust. I left mine covered in poo and didn't have any issues. And quick tip, a tripod is also a monopod. Just extend a leg. The pull ring is a really nice addition for speed. And I'm sure some of you know this issue. You've released your leg locks and you try and push your tripod down and it doesn't really want to push down. Well, this handles that. If this thing is flopping about while you're carrying this, then stick it in there. And the second thing is that the spreader closes automatically, which can be a little bit annoying if you're in the low mode and you want to move the tripod around, then your legs can sort of close in on you. When you're not in the low mode with these spread out, there's no problem. You can lift it up, move it around, do whatever. And of course, there are tripods that will go lower if that's what you need. If you're trying to close the legs up while it's in a weird position like this with one bit extended more than the other or something like that, it closes automatically and prevents it from breaking. The carry bag is really nice, extra roomy, very well padded and a nice big pocket at the front. Perfect for a good spatula, which I always take with me in case of a zombie apocalypse. The carry handle is a little closer to this side and there's a little marking sewn inside the case to show you which direction the head should go to get a good balance when holding the bag. You don't want to look like some twit with a diagonal bag now, do you? All joking aside, it is actually much nicer to carry a bag that's well balanced. And as with any good tripod bag, you have a little place here to put a photo of your sister. Add a clip. You could also clip it onto your camera bag or just make someone else carry it. Like a boss. So in conclusion, this is a really damn good fluid head, but you will want to keep your hand on it during the shot. That's just how this thing works. For professional telephoto work, there are heads that will perform better, which as far as I know, are all heavier and more expensive. The SDS legs are fantastic, especially if speed is important, and they do look really impressive as well. The 535 has some advantages like a lower carrying weight, but I really, really like these legs. All right, guys, thanks for watching. You can support this channel by getting your stuff from the links down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the best short film ever made. Pans, tilts, and incorrect music.